Hello and welcome to the How I Made It in Maya series. My name is Arvid Schneider and I'm a lighting supervisor at Image Engine in Vancouver, Canada. In the How I Made It in Maya series, I'll be showing you the details of the new features of LookDevX. We will go into details of production workflows, how to create custom materials, custom shaders, and overall working in the LookDevX graphs. As you can see, we are in Maya and today's focus will be about LookDevX. LookDevX is a production agnostic material editor that resolves UST materials. In this video, I'll be going into a lot more details on the introduction of LookDevX, how you can assign materials, how you can use it. And in the following videos, I'll be focusing more on production workflows, how to structure USD files, how to work with sub layers, how to work with the graph. So there will be a lot more to come. But as I said, this video will be about the introduction. And without further ado, let's just dive in and get going. So as you can see in my outliner, I have my lighting group, which just houses the HDRI, and then I have my regular geometry hierarchy. So that is pretty standard stuff. As I said in the introduction, LookDevX requires a USD stage to work with. So in the first thing that we want to do is go to uh, Windows, open up the USD layer editor, and at the bottom here, you can see we have a create option from file or stage with new layer. I want to focus on the new layer, which will create me a stage one and is currently empty. Uh, so now we need to kind of get the geometry from our Maya environment into the USD stage environment. And a quick easy way is you can just right click your root folder, duplicate as USD data and pipe it into your stage. So now you can see the data is being duplicated in this new stage environment. You can hide the default Maya geometry. So now we are already in a USD setup. So what, what can we do with this? So the cool thing is now you are working in USD, which means it's a universal scene description, and this applies to any other DCC that supports USD. So it's really nice to collaborate. Now let me show you a couple of ways how we can assign and create shaders. So the first thing what is quite naturally to you, you can click on your geometry, right click it, and say assign new material, material X, and then you can pick the standard surface shader. You can see it automatically created me this material scope, which is essentially a library or a location which houses all your shaders. And within here, I've got my standard surface shader right there. So I can quite easily go into the default attribute editor, change my colors, and they are represented in the viewport. Maybe pick something cooler, something maybe a little bit more dinosaur skin, something like that maybe. Um, and, and that is now represented in the viewport and I can also play with my roughness value. You can see they are represented as well. Uh, what I can do as well, if I render now using the GPU, you can see that the results are pretty much the same. Um, there's no discrepancy in viewport to the actual rendered results. So that is pretty awesome. And so this was now right clicking it from the viewport. You can also do a similar thing from the outliner. You can maybe pick the body, right click it here, assign existing material like that. So now we just assign it like this. You can, the same way as we assign them in the viewport, you can also, uh, let me just find it in here, maybe for the jaw, you can right click it and um, assign a new material, material X, standard surface, and you can see it automatically created a new shader on the left. Same as before, we can pick a color, maybe we just hue shift it slightly, so it's obvious that it's something different maybe a little bit brownish, and now we have a new shader. So it's pretty straightforward. Like I think that it's a typical workflow you, you used to know as well. One caveat now, there's also the Arnold standard surface shader. It, it renders exactly as you know, but the only caveat is it does not represent in the viewport at this moment. So I can show you how that would look like. So if I select my geometry in the left, I can right click, assign new material, Arnold standard surface. You can see it just keeps uh, white. But if I change my color, maybe um, we go a little bit more reddish. You can see it's not in a viewport, but if I render, it will pop up the same way as we know. So that's just one minor thing that you just need to be aware of. So by default, it creates this MTL scope. You can create your own material scopes. I mean, for instance, you can just right click the stage shape, add new prim, create a new scope, group them into more fitting names. Let's say we want to do legs MTL. This is now my leg material scope. Um, you can right click this and assign a new material, material X and standard surface. You can now right click the leg MTL, 
assign add new material, material like standard surface. And now you can see it will just pop up in this area. And same way as before, I can, let's say I wanna pick the hands and assign existing. I can then see the both of the scopes. So it's quite nice and straightforward. And I can just assign it and change my shaders as I need them to be. All right, so that is how you would assign materials and you, how you can edit them in the default editor. So now let's dive into look dev X and see how that looks. So at the top here, you have this, this shader ball with that X. That means that is the look dev X editor. You can click on that to open up look dev X, or you can go to windows, look dev X graph editor. And you can see this pops up nicely on the left hand side here. And if I want to view a shader, I can now click it in the viewport, click the geo, right click and show and look dev X. I can create a new tab or pop it into the existing one. I can also rename this if I need to. Um, let's just say main or whatever. It's always good to name things so you know what's going on. And now viewing this in look dev X, you can already see we've got the standard surface one orange thing if I double click this and then we're diving in. So what this top level node is, it's essentially a container that houses the shader. This is a little bit different than the hypershade because there was no container context. But in this sense, essentially we can do a very cool things on the containers. We can promote parameters and make this really straightforward and intuitive, uh, but this will not be covered in this video. I just wanna let you know that this standard surface here is just the material container and within we've got the shader. So if I click on the shader, you can see we got the parameters panel. That means we can hide the attribute editor and technically we can now just work within here. If I change my colors, you can see they are represented in the viewport. Everything is nice and fluid and obviously everything else works the same way. You can connect bump maps, texture maps, all of that. We will cover that in, in a different video though. And so what if you want to create a new material? You can now hit tab to create a new material. So I could go material X and dive in here, standard surface ND, and this is now, uh, let's call this maybe um, flag MTL container. And now you can see also on the left that created this on the left-hand side, the container has been named and the shader is just our default name. Let's just call this maybe legs. And then it's nicely structured. Same way as before, I can select my geo group for the legs, right click assign existing, and then MTL, leg MTL container, and now they are assigned. So it's very intuitive. I really like this new workflow. You can see now everything is a little bit bluish. And what else can we do? So imagine we have a separate stage, another stage, right? By default, it will create the material uh, wherever the stage is selected. So if I create a new stage like this, we got now stage two. Let's just say stage two creature B, whatever. And if I now hope open this up and if I create a material now, so this can be a little bit confusing, but we are currently looking into the main tab here. And if I now go to the top level container, I can create another standard surface here. And now it says, the scene contains multiple stages. Pick a stage by selecting it in the outliner. So I will just select the stage in the outliner and I do the same, create the shader. And now you can see it will actually populate it in my stage two in the creature B stage. If I now select my other stage again and I create another standard surface shader, we are back into the uh, creating them in, in this stage. So that's just something you have to be aware of um, where you are creating the shaders. Um, and where your stages are selected. You can copy and paste materials or move them into different material scopes. So imagine now we want to move this lag MTL container into our lag scope here. So I can just middle mouse click and drag it into the lag MTL. And you can see now that pop right in here. But what you will notice is first of all, you get a notification or a warning below that something has changed. And you can also see that in the viewport, my legs are not this blue color anymore. And the reason for that is as soon as you move things, the material bindings are broken. So you have to rebind them or reassign the materials to your geometries. So if I select my legs here and assign to selection, you can then see again, okay, they are back to blue. So that's something that you need to be aware of as well. You can also copy and paste things into different scopes. So I could just paste this in here and then the material hops into this. So it's very nice 
Another cool thing is if you hop into like a material like this, you can quite easily copy and paste your materials like that. So you can see that will also be populated on the left here under the same material container, you get now different standard surface shaders. So it's a very nice uh, way to easily copy and paste things. So I'm cutting things now, if I paste them, they go in here. So you can quite flexibly work and copy and paste your shaders and materials. And if we render now, we can see that our little dinosaur looks exactly the same in the render as in the viewport. So it's a very good representation. You can quickly work in the viewport real time, do your things and then render and see how that works with a ray tracer. So this concludes the introduction video. Next videos will be more in depth in production structures and stage sub layering and very interesting things are coming. So stay tuned.